Those are brackets, right? Not parentheses. Right. Oh, okay. The square brackets. Because when we did um, we did string indexing and slicing. Right. That's what I you thought. Can pick I just... out the character, whichever one you want. So since we need the first one in each one, we'll just use zero for all of these. Yeah. Lists work the same way as strings, so if we want to get the first element out of this list, we can use the bracket notation to get it. So in this case, it's my list zero, and that gives us whatever the first element is, which in this case is one. You can actually think of strings as a list of characters. So you can think of that being the same as. In terms of how Python interprets it, um, they're both considered what's called iterables. So that is what we're going to cover today: is iteration, aka for loops and while loops. So to iterate something is to kind of keep making successive passes over it and do something every time you do that. So a lot of times it's used to refine something, like if you were um, shaving or something, you might use a lot like a longer setting. If you're a guy, and do that. <laughs> I was serious, facial hair problem. Yeah, you might use a longer setting first, and then set it closer to your face, and then do that one. I don't know if that's weird or not, but um, so you keep making successive passes, right? Like for every setting on your razor or something like that. And that's basically exactly what this is, um, except we're going to do it for items in iterable objects. So an iterable object is just anything that has a list. So a string is going to be iterable because that's really just a list of characters put together. And lists are going to be iterable, like this one, two, three, four, five, because uh, that is just a set of numbers that we've stored in a list. Um, you can also you can store multiple types of things in a list. So um, we could do like. and then float, and that's fine. Problem, uh, Python has no problem with that. You know, and if you call zero with index, it'll return you with there. Or, you know, Why did it round the last number? Why did it do that on the last number? Um, because if you don't specify, it goes out to a specific precision. Okay. Um, and since I didn't specify, it just went ahead and went out like that when I was printing it. Um, so you can just store pretty much anything in a list. And even when we get to making complicated objects that are like 
many different values associated with one thing, like a color and a name and a height and a width um, stored in an object. That whole object can be in a list. So does that concept sort of make sense to everybody? If you were implementing this, how would you say, I want each row to be an entry in my list? Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's actually a whole module called CSV module um, that you can use and basically import it and then write an write a iterable statement saying go through each line and store it in this list. And we'll go over that after we do the basics of iteration. Because I know everybody wants to do that. <laughs> um, so, how do we write an iterable statement? Um, We'll go ahead and keep working with um, this list. We'll work with my list, which is the numbers. So you're going to have a keyword. Just like the if statement starts with a keyword that turns yellow, so does four. So four is a reserved word, and you can't name your variables four. And you can't put it in a place that's not a, this kind of context. Like, you can't just stick it somewhere else, right? So then we want to use a temporary variable name. So every time we go through an item, we're going to store it in a variable so that we can reference it inside the loop. So we would just want to tell it what we want that to be. And a lot of times we will just use x, since that's the canonical variable name. And then you use in to define what your iterable is. So in this case, we're going to use the my list. And you end with the colon. So it looks a little similar to an if statement, right? You have a reserve word, and then it ends with a colon, and then it's going to be indented, just like yeah, if statements are. Sure. So that indented for me because it's smart enough, right? So now we want to look at what do we want to do to every item in this list. So let's say we want to multiply it by 2 and then replace that item. So for this, we would do x and then I'll print it first so that you can see what it is now. So these are all the actions that are going to happen for each item. So I hit enter twice, because it'll automatically stay indented, and then if you hit enter on a blank line, it'll be like, oh, you're done writing instructions for the for loop. Okay, I'll execute it now. You already defined your blank, right? Yeah, it's up here. It just had one, two, three, four, five in it. So, we got two, four, six, eight, ten. So does that... This general concept of iteration. <laughs> so, like I said before, you can even do this for, for strings. So, let's say four letter in. I did. I did. It's further up. I scrolled up. See, it's right up uh, here. My list. And then it was just one, two, three, four, five. So, remember how I said it you kind of treat strings just like iterable, just like lists, in terms of being an iterable thing? This just went through each letter in my name and it puts out the letter. How does it know the word letter? That's just what I call the variable. So, in the last four loop, I called it x. And then every time I referred to whatever variable I was on, like whatever item in the list I was on, it got temporarily assigned to x. And I just told it, x is what I want you to use in my for uh, statement definition. Okay. Then, when I wanted to reference it, I did x gets x plus times 2, and then put x. And so, every time we went to another item in the list, x changed. It got updated to whatever the next thing was. So, the same thing happened down here. I wanted to use something a little bit more intuitive and descriptive. So, I called a variable letter instead of x, since I knew I was looking for a string. So, for letter in the string, which is the print letter. Mm -hmm. I feel 
once you guys want to try writing a for statement. And you can either use a list. You can even define a list right in the, in the statement. So you can do. string, so remember this part I had up here, that this is kind of the same as this. So it knows that each one of those is a letter. Yeah, it kind of, the way that Python interprets a string is like a list of letters. So it's really no different from our list of numbers, except it's, it treats it a little bit more conveniently, so we can do other stuff with it that's specifically for strings. But when you're talking about iteration, it'll act so it's not reading, when you type in letter, it's not reading the word letter. It's just reading whatever is in X's spot and printing yeah. it out one at a time. Yeah. So no matter what you put there, it was going to say the same. Yeah. So the only things you can't put there, it's any valid variable name you can put there. Okay. So you couldn't use if, and you couldn't use, you know, for or whatever <laughs> again. Um, and you couldn't have spaces in your variables, just like you can't do it normally. So anytime, if you can assign something to something with that name, a, ver a variable with that name, you can use it in that part. Like, it's just like a variable. Sometimes you can get tripped up with this because you might call something, like say you use X already in your program, and then you also use it in your for loop. The value of X at the end of the loop would be whatever the last item you iterated to was. And then you'd be like, I don't understand, like why is this value that? It doesn't make any sense. But because you actually used it in your loop, it overrode it. So you can still get caught up with that. Do you guys all write a loop? that returns a list. So it does become a list eventually, but this is called the range function. And you can pass it in a number, and it will just give you a list of numbers up to, but not including that number. So it gave me a list of numbers, 0, up to, and including 9, which is still 10 numbers, but 0 is next. So that could be a convenient function if you know you want to loop through something 50 times, but you don't want to sit there and do a list and write out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50. Yeah. <laughs> I accidentally, instead of I, I said print 1. So oh. <laughs> and I just printed 1, 10 times. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually 
good because like you might just want to do that. You know, you might want to do something like that and not be not be altering or printing something that is in the list. You just know you want to go through and do something a few times. Um, what is the first? Like, when would you want to do that? Why? When would you want to not? Because I want to be uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, for a lot of reasons. So, like Melanie mentioned, the CSV. Yeah. If you wanted to take a CSV and then read it each line, that's a loop. So it would read okay. it. It, it would actually be a nested loop, so it would be a for loop within a for loop. It would be for each line in this file, um, store that. Then you would loop through each item in that line because they're separated by commas. Okay. So you can actually nest iteration as much as you want. Just keep going. Okay. Um, so you guys have to think of that. It's really great for generating HTML, like a table, because you have table. I don't know if you guys know HTML at all, but let's do that. Let's, um, all right, we're going to have an HTML string and do some concatenation exercise here. Um, so let's do, so we're going to start with the table tag and then let's say we want five rows. Sometimes it's hard to do the a bunch of nested no. indents inside idle. Let me explain it. I'm going to put some extra white space in here just, just so it's a little bit easier to read. So, when I, I actually put a backslash n at the end of here, and that is just a character that means skip to the new, uh, skip to a new line. So, I just did that so it was a little bit easier to read. So, what we're doing here is we're creating an HTML table. So, a table in HTML, you have an opening and closing table. Then for each row, you're going to have an open and closed TR tag, which stands for table row. Uh, and then within each row, you're going to have however many TD tags you want. And those are each mm -hmm. table cell. So this is like the perfect case for nested loops, because you have to loop through to create your rows. And then within each row, you can loop through to create on your cells. So who here like, has absolutely no idea what HTML looks like? No. 
Okay. So whenever you have an opening tag, it looks like this. And the closing tag for that is going to be the same tag but with a slash. So that marks the end of that tag, or content. So, and here, here's the TR, the table row opening tag. And then here's our ending tag. And in between, we have TD sets. So in this case, we're going to have a table that just has four rows. Um, and each row is going to have zero, one, two, three, four in it. I'm going to drop this into an HTML file so you guys can see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, where did we get one, two, three, four? Range five counts up to five. Yeah, so I used range five so I don't have to write out zero, one, two, three, four. So the first, here's our first um, four statement. So four I in range five. Uh, so that is going to have five iterations, right? And inside of that for loop, the first thing I do is add a tr tag to my HTML string. You guys remember just doing the regular string concatenation, right? So I know that this first iteration is going to be my rows. So at the beginning of that loop, inside, I want to have an opening tr tag. But then for each row, I want to have table cells. So see how it's the second for, for statement is indented underneath the first for statement? That means that this for statement is going to happen for every iteration in the first for statement. So, in this case, I'm still doing range five because I have I'm going to have a five by five table. So five rows, five cell columns rather. Then I know for each for for each um, item here, I want to add a table cell. So I'm adding to my HTML string an open an open tag a string formatter placeholder and a closing tag, then I'm just going to put X in, which is whatever that range is. So it'll be either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Then I come back out, see how I've, I've unindented from here to here? So now I'm out of the nest for loop. So uh, the only thing in, the only action happening in that nested for loop is that one line with the, and I'm much pointing to my screen here. This is the only action happening inside the nested for loop because of our intent structure. Then I come out of it and I add on my closing table row tag because that for that nested for loop is going to happen for each row. So I want to make sure I sandwich my opening and closing table row tags around that nested for loop. Then I come out of the first for loop and stick my closing table tag on the end and then I print it out. So I have these few instructions here, but it prints out like a whole bunch of crap. So I use iteration to go through and auto-generate a bunch of stuff for me. Questions? Could you just go over another example? Because I feel like I get it when you say it, but like if I were to have to do it by myself, I would forget the stuff. Yeah, let's go back. Let's do a. Do you, are you, is the HTML confusing more than helping? Maybe? Yes, okay. I was like, I'll skip to a real world example right away. Let's just say you have a list of names. So 
So let's say somebody gave you this list of names, or let's say we have read this list of names out of a file called you know, Python class or something. Um, and we want to print out some motivational messages. <laughs> so for student. So I have another list uh, that has some of our topics that we've covered. And for each student, I'm going to go through each one of those items and tell them how great they're doing. So for each person, it said, you're doing a great job. And then it said, you're doing especially well in iteration, operators, functions. And it said that for each person. So see how each of the names only got reproduced once? Uh, but this got this set of statements got reproduced for each name. Yeah, can you go back? To the oh, phone, okay.
Thank you. Okay, okay, I'm done. I Thank you. In this case, it'll give you an error because you don't have anything indented under a statement where it's expecting something to be indented. Um, but let's say we didn't, let's introduce a logical error here. So you have to have something indented under a for statement or an if statement, or else you'll get a compiler error. But let's just say pass, which is just a keyword for do nothing. Like, I pass, no thanks, whatever. And we accidentally have this one in line with the previous print statement, it's not going to do, well, first of all, top isn't going to be defined. So, oh, sorry, it's taking, it does take the first one. So it goes to whatever the first thing was. Oh, I'm sorry. So this did iterate through each one. So it actually took the last item. Because it iterated through successfully, it just didn't do any actions with anything. So top did get assigned iteration, then it got assigned operators, and then it got assigned functions. So remember how I said that it's going to have whatever the last value is? So since this isn't inside the for loop, it just says functions for everyone. Okay. And then what if you didn't move the, what if for under? The second floor was like all the way to the left. This one? Yeah. And then the print lined up with that. Uh, or like the print all the way to the left or print? Just like that, but without the pass. Oh, so in this case, it'll have the names and then it'll have functions. So it'll do them sequentially. statements that are indented underneath your for statement, and then you accidentally 
zone indent or something, the last statement. Um, then it's just going to keep printing out the wrong values and you're not going to know why. But it's because you have a logical error where you don't have the right instructions underneath the right iteration. So I'm sure we'll encounter that when we do problems. Um, we'll sort of run out of time. But um, I'm going to send out some problems for you guys to do by Friday. And if you don't get them, that's fine because we'll make it a all working class since this is a big deal and we just found it. Um, so I'll try to incorporate all the topics we've done up until now so that you don't lose anything. Any more questions? Do you think Tim could look at my computer? Because every time I do something in idle, it just crashes, and yeah. so then I have to like start it over, mm -hmm. so it's kind of frustrating. Yeah, I'll have to look at okay. it. Okay, that would be perfect. I think your versions are probably just screwed up. Yeah, I think so too, but um, like, I was, I kept messing up some of the syntax, and so I would just copy and paste, and then like edit the last line, just add a colon, or whatever the case may be, and then it would freeze, and then I would have to reopen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll also take a look at it. Um, um, I'll, I'll probably send some problems out today.